Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. Uh, strange video this week. We're chopping and changing back and forth in time. Um, what happened was, uh, right at the end of last year, I bought a bass guitar online and it arrived early this year, and the video you're about to watch starts with me saying Happy New Year, and then things happened. Um, I'm filming this about three weeks later, there's been developments and there's been things happening, but uh, yes, you'll see what happens as we go. Uh, suffice to say, I don't know if we have a happy ending right now, because I haven't opened this box. But let's go back in time to when I was happy and excited and opening the first box. Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. Happy New Year. It's a new year. It's time for a new piece of equipment. Um, I have been shopping, and I've bought this. Now this is from a company called Artist Guitars. They are not sponsoring this video. Uh, I can't think why anyone in their right mind would sponsor me to do this. But, you know, it might happen one day, but not today. Artists have a pretty good business model as far as uh, taking sort of classic designs, getting them made to their specifications in China, and then they sell them through Australia and New Zealand just on their website. Um, there's no uh, dealing with the, re the retail aspect of having a guitar company, so they're, they're cutting out you know, one of those links in that chain and they're saving a bit of money doing it. Um, uh, unlike some companies, they do then pass that savings on to me, uh, or in this case, on to you, because this instrument was actually paid for using the YouTube ad revenue that I made last year. Um, pretty much all of it. <laughs> I didn't make a whole lot of money last year. This bass didn't cost a whole lot of money, but it works out to be about the same. So, um, thank you everybody for subscribing and watching and paying attention. You've bought me a bass. Awesome. What you've bought me is a VHYB5. Now, it's basically, it's a P bass copy. Um, it's a vintage hybrid, uh, because it's got a jazz pickup on it as well, uh, bass 5 string. So, that's what I've got. Uh, and, yeah, let's take a look. So the first thing that uh, is immediately apparent is that they've put wood joins in odd places, and there's more of them than you'd expect. Uh, if you look at the end of the instrument, there is a join there, 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 and they've had to put a little cap on the edge here. That's unfortunate. That's sort of, that's the business area. That's right where you're actually uh, looking at it and where you're seeing that, and there's just this big ugly join there. I mean, like, this is a budget instrument. But, I mean, really, just... You've got a block of wood that you've glued together, just flip the blank over. <laughs> Do it on the other side. There's no join there. This is a bit unfortunate as well. There's some quite squirrely grain in the neck. Like, uh, it's, it's beautiful and everything, but it's not really what you want in a neck. If you're going to have... If you're going to have flame figure on a neck, then you want it consistent all the way up. That makes for a pretty good neck. What you don't want is some flame, no flame, what looks like some crotch figure there, and some knots. Uh, yeah, that's not great. That's really not a very good neck. The fingerboard is, of course, made of plastic, essentially. It's uh, sort of compressed wood fibres stuck together with uh, resin of some sort. Um, you know, I mean, it's alright. It's a, it's a good dense material, uh, it doesn't look all that attractive, but I suppose I can, I can polish that up and make it look a little bit nicer. Right. Straight out of the box, okay. I'll just change the cable because this is one of the cheap cables that do break down. And it has been hanging around on my bench for a while. So let's use the cable that came with it. Ooh. 
yeah. Output jack's dodgy. Not impressed with that at all. Actually plays pretty good. Plays pretty good. I don't mind the sound of it. Um, we will of course do proper tone tests when we're plugged into a proper system. The very first thing I want to do, because ultimately this was the point of buying this thing, uh, is that I get to stick a tortoise shell pit guard on it. And that means getting into the guts and seeing what uh, is going on with that output jack. Holy moly, what the hell is going on in here? Okay, so I've had to take a little bit of time to get my head around what on earth all of this is. So, uh, this is the brains of the unit, this is the preamp. It's got a lot of wires coming out of it. There is no part number, there is no way to look up what all of these wires do, other than trying to figure out where they're going. This wire is just hanging around loose. There's... It, like I don't know if it's meant to be attached to something. Um, everything seems to work. Uh, there's also a yellow one just there that's been cut uh, and obviously doesn't need to be used for anything. Uh, we've got this arrangement here, which is, I thought initially it was just connectors, but the uh, heat shrink on it is a little bit loose and it's just got a couple of caps in there. It's a little unusual that you wouldn't stick those just on the pots, but the pots themselves are unusual because these are all double gang. Um, yeah, that's a bit weird. You never see that. And I think the reason why they've done that is because this one here is a push-pull. Now that's active-passive. So uh, essentially what we can do is we can have... Because there's one, one of those, one of those uh, caps in there has the red wire that goes down to the treble control. Um, and in passive mode, that still works. So I think what we've got here is uh, one gang for active, one gang for passive, although the bass thing doesn't work at all in passive mode. Um, there's no bass boost available in passive mode. Uh, but e everything else, I think it's, it's basically running two circuits. I can't see anything really wrong with the output jack other than the fact that the soldering is a little bit crusty. Um, I suspect it may just be corrosion on the inside or possibly just the cheap plug uh, maybe not making the best contact with it. It's also full of sawdust. It's full of sawdust because I suppose, you know, why wouldn't it be? Um, yeah, right. Just while I've got the strings off, I want to have a, uh, have a look inside the neck pocket as well. Uh, I... Have, if you sight down the neck, you can usually tell where the neck, sh what angle the neck should be on, and it's too low. So first off, it needs a shim just to tilt it back, you know, another degree and a half, just to get the surface of the fingerboard pointing directly at the top of the saddles. At the moment, it's just aimed just a little bit too low. Uh, so we'll get that off, have a look at what's going on in there, check the workmanship, check the, uh, uh, we'll just check see what's there. It might already be shimmed and we've got to stick another one in there. That's not bad, it didn't just drop straight out. Oh, yep. Okay. Nice and clean. That is nice and clean. They've not sanded, they've not bothered to take the time to sand the end of the neck. In fact, I'm not even sure if that's sealed. It probably is sealed. It's definitely not sanded though. Uh, there is no shim, so I'll chuck one in there. Incidentally, the neck actually feels quite nice. These edges are nicely rolled. That's actually, that's actually, I mean, despite the fact that they've made it out of a piece of probably the worst piece of wood they could have chosen. Like, it's a very nice shape. Yes.
Okay, okay. now I want to try and do some in-depth headstock analysis here. Um, just putting this uh, string on, and noticed the size of the hole in the centre of the tuna is enormous. Um, normally it's solid metal and there's just a little hole and you just poke the end of the string down inside it. But you, you, can, you can see in there, that's, this is basically hollow. The whole thing's basically hollow. Um, I wonder how long it will be before it snaps off. Also, they're not centred. Um, where the retainers are in the wood, like, they are not retaining anything. They're basically there for decoration because the hole is oversized, the tuna is undersized. There's a gap on this side on all of them. Um, wow. <laughs> I don't know how they think that's a good idea. And I've just found another problem, after shimming the neck to get the neck aiming at the top of the saddles, I just needed to uh, sort of fine tune these, which means raising them just a, t just a tad, but the D-string won't raise. I've never come across this before. You get it so far, and my finger was in the way, but we'll see if we can get you to see that again. It raises up a bit. And then it slips back down. The other one does it as well. Raises up. Pops back down. That's no good. I think I've got a solution for this. And it does involve taking the saddle off popping the uh, height adjustment screws out, flipping the whole thing at 180 degrees, screwing it back on, and seeing if the threads will bite properly in that direction. If it doesn't, then we have a much, much bigger problem. Oh! <laughs> so that's just fallen all the way out. That's literally just fallen straight through. Wow, that's no good at all. How many do I get on here? Yeah. Half of that hole isn't even threaded. Oh my goodness. Like, I was so ready for this instrument to be, you know, need a few things done to it to get it to, to, to be, you know, sort of semi-professional grade. Good grief. <sighs> okay, I can't get the camera to focus on that. They've been uh, machined too large and they're only just the tiniest little bit at one end is threaded. So what do we do about that? Well, uh, plan A really, just uh, see if we can get those threads that are engaging at the bottom so that it'll push the saddle up far enough. Um, uh, I've forgotten which way around it has to go, yes. Yes, that way around, uh, and hopefully we can get the required height out of it now, but honestly, I've never seen any piece of hardware that's this bad. Hopefully that works. Oh, like, I don't trust that. Like, I don't really want to take that on stage. I think we're looking at a replacement bridge entirely, actually, because I just, like, this whole thing is just suspect. Wow. Okay, that is looking a lot nicer. That looks like I'm actually going to be able to play it instead of fighting with it. Um, it's maybe just a little bit high at the nut, but that's like that's tolerable. I, I can I can finish that later if I feel the need. Um, really, what I want to do now is see how it sounds because if that amalgamation of weirdness in there can uh, really redeem the space then I will be very very happy so let's find out okay so here we go it is working we are plugged into a Trace Elliott preamp uh, which is going straight into the computer um, there will be a little bit of compression on it but not very much um, the output is quite anemic like it's a very quiet bass you won't be able to pick that because of the compression and then whatever YouTube does to it after I lose control of it. 
Uh, yeah, so we're really going for tone, not volume on this one, because it's like pretty quiet. <laughs> That's actually quite a pleasant sound. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, the D string, now that we got the saddle sorted, I was able to raise that up uh, to hopefully try and stop it, but because it was, it was buzzing because it was too low, and now it's buzzing because there's a high fret somewhere. <laughs> Probably that one, uh, but uh, like I don't even know if these frets have been leveled. Um, I'm thinking of just going and doing it just for peace of mind. Um, that's not bad. Just the P bass pickup. I have to say, it's actually quite nice to play. They've made the neck out of some very suspect wood, but they've done quite a nice job on it. Aside from why ever the D-string is not uh, not behaving, but, you know, um, that's right. Supposedly the nut is made of bone. Uh, we'll find out when I grind it down just a little bit, because the, yeah, the nut needs to come down just half a millimetre. Like, not very much, just a little bit, and then it'll be perfect. But it needs to be done. Um, uh, so that's just, just the P bass. Let's go just to the jazz bass. Sounds exactly like what you would expect, um, except when we get to the D string. String Buzz City! Nice. Now, that is, of course, with the active electronics engaged. If I pop that out, then you figure out exactly just how underpowered these pickups are. Because this now no longer has the bass boost. When you're in passive mode, of course, as I said, the treble pickup does the sorry, the treble control does still engage. Let's wind that back to about halfway. And at the like it's working in passive mode, that's great, but it is so quiet I can barely hear that coming out of my speakers. And there it is. So let's. I don't know how I'm going to sum this up. Um, the pros and cons of an instrument like this, you really have to weigh both of those versus the cost of it. Um, and I don't like doing that a lot of the time because people will say, oh, it's all right for the money. But. Like, if the, if the bridge saddle's threads are stripped, no amount of money is going to make that good. You, you know, you can't, you can't say, oh, it cost me a dollar, and then it broke. Well, is that alright for the money? Because it's still broken. Um, so, you know, saying that something is, is, is alright for the money, like, I don't see it that way. It either works or it doesn't. It's either good or it's not. Um, and this, by and large, is not good good <laughs> everything on here could be upgraded uh, uh the start with the bridge definitely that needs to go immediately um the electronics are underpowered they sound pretty good but they're very very quiet there's not a lot of output and you know dodgy jack wires hanging around inside i just no um uh, the body is made up of lots of bits of weird bits of wood and with joins in weird places. Oh, and I'd never mentioned this. It's really heavy. This thing weighs a ton. I don't know how much it weighs because uh, just like the Chinese Rickenbacker, it tops out 
uh, more than what my my scales can weigh. So it's over five kilograms. Uh, the neck is beautiful. The neck is lovely to play. It is a very nice neck to play. Unfortunately, they've made it out of wood that is going to warp and twist. This whole area is just going to bend, uh, and that'll be the end of that. The tuners, again, you know, th they might be alright for the money, but if you know that hollow arrangement there bends off centre because it's not supported properly and it's weakened to start with, then that's just not good no matter how cheap it is nothing you know it, there's no l there's no price low enough to justify this i'm not impressed and i hate to say it they advertise this as good for students good for professionals well it's not <laughs> if it's broken uh if, if if the wiring's bad it's not good for either, any of those people so i i just don't know what to I don't have a, a happy conclusion to this except to just start upgrading things and where do you start and where do you stop because you know you could upgrade the bridge you could upgrade the electronics you could upgrade you could you could make a new body for it maybe route some chambers out make it lighter um, you could put a new neck on it you could uh, put new tuners on the new neck and what's left the only part that's left is the scratch plate and I bought this base because that was the part that I wanted to replace. And here's the thing, that doesn't fit. They've routed out so much wood in this area that that's too thin to cover the cavity. Happy New Year. And so that brings us up to the present day. Um, I had contacted artist and I sent them a rough cut of the video that you just saw. They were not that impressed with themselves. They were very apologetic and they were very nice about it. Um, uh, I can say their customer service was excellent. Um, and they said all the right things. Uh, we're sorry, that thing should have never made it past the thing. There's been a breakdown of the quality control. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and of course they offered to send me a new one which is in this box now now I haven't seen it yet I want to know that not all of them are as awful as that first one <laughs> so that I know whether or not to recommend them to you fine people um, so let's get into it there's one join there's one join there. Is it under 5 kg? Nope. We get all the way up to, if I lower it on there very gently. Nope. It's a heavy base. It's too heavy to measure. Okay, so first things first. Let's see if we've got an output jack that's reliable enough to walk on stage with. Because, you know, that would be good. Something I didn't mention about the last one, and it's worth mentioning, um, is that I do actually really like this battery compartment. Um, uh, it's just got this little compartment here and you can see down in there there's a large hole and a small hole for the large and small contacts and that literally just pops in there done so let's see if we have any sound this time oh you're kidding me so there's this little rubber gasket uh, that's supposed to be uh, vibration dampening for the output jack and it's misaligned and it's uh, squishing out half half of the uh, Oh dear. It doesn't mean it's not going to work, it's just really sloppy. Okay, let's see if we can get any sound out of it at any rate. Seems to be good. Seems to be good. Right, let's tune it. 
Alright, so how does it play straight out the box? <laughs> it's that same Rattly D string. None of the other strings are doing it. Okay, well, let's test that saddle and just see how see how she runs, if it runs at all. Yep. That's working. I can raise that miles higher than I want it. <laughs> Doesn't stop the buzzing though, the frets need to be leveled. Frets definitely need to be leveled, I'm going to lower that. Ah, how's the neck? I haven't checked this yet. Oh, lovely, lovely, look at that. That is exactly what you want to see. That is beautifully straight grain. Um, it is flat sawn, so as they've sliced it through that way, uh, the natural waviness in the grain has been sliced through, and that's why you get all of these, which uh, uh, doesn't necessarily look all that attractive. But it is indicative of the fact that they have gone so close to where the grain is and the grain is so straight that it'll uh, just be, uh, uh, yeah, no, like I have no problem with this neck whatsoever. And, and, it's got that same shape as the last one, nicely rounded edges. This is a very nice neck. This is a very good neck. Um, how are the tuners? <laughs> the tuners are still... <laughs> Weird. Okay. Uh, you, you've seen them on the last one. They're exactly the same. Okay. And now the moment of truth. Oh, uh, what holy hell have we unleashed here? Again! Random loose wire. What is that? An antenna? There was a yellow wire on the preamp which had been cut. Yeah, there it goes. I want to measure how strong these pickups are. Because uh, there's not a whole lot of output coming out of it. And I suspect that uh, all of the circuitry is just sucking volume. As opposed to putting it out. Um, I could... I could just measure it in place across there. But you're not just measuring the pickup. In that case you are actually measuring... Uh, part way through a much larger circuit so you never get an accurate reading um, also it's worth noting that uh, the number of ohms or killer ohms that uh, you, you measure across a pickup is not strictly speaking indicative of the amount of power output that it's going to have because there's magnetism and um, proximity of the string to the pickup and there's a whole bunch of other factors but it's a pretty good starting point for knowing if you've got a really weak pickup or one that's strong enough um, is just to measure it. So I'm just going to pop these wires off and see what we get. Okay so what do we see across a split coil pickup? 10.46 that's heaps. That sh that should be capable of putting out a pretty, pretty chunky signal. Um, this circuitry isn't. I wonder what the jazz bass pickup reads, because I might be well on the way here to just tossing all of this out, because it was crap last time. It's crap this time. And if these pickups work perfectly well in passive mode, which they must do because this bass has passive mode, then I see no reason to have something there that's just taking up space and uh, sucking all your tone. Jazz bass pickup 10.66. That is going to be a fine matched pair. And this preamp can go straight in the bin.
Right, that's a full rebuild from scratch. I have put a, another output jack in here because it turns out that the hole that was drilled for that pot there was actually the same size as what would take an output jack. So I just decided to fill the hole with an output jack. Now, that presents an interesting opportunity because this barrel jack here is, of course, a stereo plug. That's a mono plug. We might be able to do something interesting with the stereo wiring like we saw on the Rickenbacker, but that's probably another video. I'm not going to do any more mods on this one because this video is already ridiculously long. Uh, what I'm going to do is put on a set of brand new strings because you should always put new strings on a cheap bass. They do not make their money by putting expensive strings on. Uh, so I'll do that, I'm going to give it a proper setup, and then I'm going to go and give it a proper play. We're going to hear this thing in all its glory, finally.
Okay, so let's talk about what just happened. <laughs> um, the sound you were just hearing coming out of the space was from the P pickup only. The Jazz pickup still is very, very quiet and sounds very, very thin. Uh, not a whole lot of use, really. Um, but that was the P pickup on full, everything up full. Um, and it was still quiet, but it sounded pretty good. I think you'll agree it's a, it's, it's a good sound. Tweak your amp, you can get a lovely tone out of the thing. It's a kind of a sad indictment, really. The nicest thing I can say about the electronics is that I really like the battery compartment. <laughs> That's the only th nice thing I can say about the electronics in this thing. The neck is just lovely to play. It's, you know, it's got, like, the corners are rounded. You very rarely see that on budget instruments. You very rarely see, uh, uh, that, like, it's just, it's just really nice in the hand. Uh, the cons. Well, <sighs> I've spent this entire video talking about the cons. Buyer beware, essentially, is what it comes down to. Um, the, the electronics are just awful. The tuners, as they stand at the moment, I'm going to see how they go. The bridge, just if you buy one of these, just be prepared to buy a new bridge just instantly. Just like th this one's fine. I checked all the threads and everything on here. It's fine, but don't trust these bridges. And apart from that, yeah, I mean, what else do you want for the money? Uh, it, what, what I was expecting to get for the price was uh, a base that needed a fret level. It did and that had terrible electronics, and it does. So, therefore, I am satisfied, and if those are your parameters for what you are willing to accept in an instrument, uh, and what you can fix yourself, then I am recommending that you buy this. But, buyer beware. <laughs> Don't let them get away with anything. Um, I have noticed on the artist website, they actually have a sort of a bargain bin clearance thing, and they've got one of these with all of the faults that I described and they've got a second one of these with even more problems with the electronics so when you return something to them they don't fix it they just sell it at a reduced rate so there's a very good chance that if you go onto their website right now you'll be able to find the first one of these that I had and buy it but don't because the neck will bend and the bridge was crap I don't know if they've replaced those parts if they haven't bothered to fix the electronics, then I'm guessing they haven't done any servicing to the rest of it either. So, just buyer beware. As far as budget 5-string p base copies go, you don't really have a lot of options. There's uh, this one, and there's the Harley Benton one, which is available from the Toman website. Um, now, my friend actually has one of those, and I've played it. And that was kind of the reason why I thought this might be a very, very good thing. So... What I'm going to do in the next video is hopefully do a direct comparison between uh, this one and the Harley Benton. I think the Harley Benton is just ever so slightly cheaper, but if you live anywhere other than Germany, then you'll be paying for shipping on, on top of that, whereas shipping on artist instruments is free. Um, uh, and if you don't like it, you can ship it back to them for free. They just they take care of all of that they've got a very comprehensive customer service uh, uh, scheme 90 day return scheme just for, for for situations exactly like what i found myself in so that's the next videos we'll do a direct comparison and then at some point a sheet of tortoise shell pickguard material will arrive and i will finally be able to make myself a tortoise shell pickguard to go on there because the black just looks a bit dull i don't really like it um I'm also considering getting a proper Bartolini p bass pickup, just because Bartolini. I'm also considering hollowing out all of this, to make it completely hollow under the pickguard, just so that it weighs uh, maybe, maybe a kilogram less would be nice. At any rate, I hope you've enjoyed following my journey with the space. Um, uh, it's had its ups and downs. It's been exciting. Yes, hopefully uh, the next couple will be just as exciting as I start to do stuff to it. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing, and I'll see you really soon. Cheers.